Oh, the Kraft yeah. Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's the first week of January. Let's see what's doing this evening at the home of the great Gildersleeve. His nephew, Leroy, is sprawled on the living room floor helping Dick Tracy solve a case. Oh, boy! His pretty niece, Marjorie, is curled up on the sofa with a movie magazine. And the great man himself is in his study going over his first of the year bills. Oh, brother. <laughs> Nine and seven are 16, and five makes 21, plus $64.34 makes 85.34. In Christmas bills alone, <laughs> certainly is more blessed to give in December than to receive in January. <laughs> Uh, see how I came out in 1948. Adding the 85.34 to the year's total makes... Nine goes in there. Zeke. We've spent $500 more than we did the year before. No wonder I can't keep any money in the bank. Time to have a talk with a little family. Marjorie, Leroy. What's up, Aunt? My bank account's down. That's what's up, Leroy. We have to figure out where we can start saving. Marjorie, are you listening? Oh, sorry, Yankee. I was reading about Gregory. Well, drop Gregory unless he wants to pay some of these bills. <laughs> oh, all right. Now, Marjorie, this is important. I've been going over my books, and your old uncle is getting in deeper all the time. At the rate we're going, we can't live on my salary anymore. Oh, that's too bad, Unky. I was about to ask if you'd let me take advantage of the January clearance sale. Oh, my goodness. I need a sweater and a new flannel skirt and stockings. Well, go easy, Marjorie, please. I don't need any clothes, Unk. I'm fixed. Oh, that's fine, Leroy. So could I have 20 cents for a cheap western? Leroy? <laughs> uh, I see I can't cut down on expenses in here. I'll go talk to Bertie. They say the woman who buys for the house spends 80% of the money. Oh, Bertie. Yeah, Miss Kill, please? Bertie, I've just been having a little talk with the children about cutting expenses. Oh. You like to sit down, Miss Gilsley? Uh, <laughs> no, thanks, Bertie. Somebody in this house is spending entirely too much money. Yes, sir. we got to figure out where we can economize. Uh, suppose we take a look at some of your grocery slips. Yes, sir. Got them right here in the drawer. Oh, that's good. There must be some place we can start saving. Yes, it's pretty hard to save in the kitchen. Uh, in the kitchen, uh, yes. Look right here at this first item, coffee, 57 cents. Bertie, perhaps if you'd shop around a bit. Mr. Gillsleeve, I walked my legs off to find it that cheap. Bertie's a good shopper. Oh, yes. Well, let's take another item. Ten cans of grapefruit juice. Bertie, there's an extravagance. Well, little Leroy has to have his citrus. We don't want him to have colds all winter and grow up spindly-legged and no teeth. Yeah, no, of course not, Bertie. We've got to cut down where it's possible. Yes, sir, that's what I've been doing. There's one thing I'll say for Bertie. She's a good shopper, walks her legs off. Uh, I understand, Bertie, but... Of course, if you don't think Bertie's a good shopper... Oh, that's not it at all, Bertie. Bertie don't spare no shoe leather. There ain't a storekeeper in town don't know Bertie because she walks her legs off. Yeah, all right. I'm sorry I brought it up. Mr. Gillsleeve, did you like that rough roast we had tonight? Oh, it was very nice, Bertie. So was the price, only 69 cents a pound. You know how I got it that cheap, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes, Bertie. That's right, walk my legs off. <laughs> Uh, guess the only way I can save is to give up cigars again. Uh, 
<sighs> this is certainly the hard way to save money. Walking through a foot of snow to get downtown. Oh, Morning, Gildy. Oh, hello, Judge. If you're on your way downtown, would you mind walking in front of my car? Walking in front of your car? Yes, you're built so close to the ground, you'd make a wonderful snow plow. <laughs> All right, Hooker. Hop in, Gildy. I'll give you a lift. Well, you might drop me at the barbershop. The snow is pretty heavy this morning. Isn't it, though? I've been having a lot of fun hitting the drifts and watching it fly. Yes, yes, sucking childhood. <laughs> Why aren't you driving this morning, Gildy? Wouldn't your car start? I'm going to walk to work from now on, Judge. I'm going to save some money. I've even given up cigars. Uh-huh. Sounds as though you've been trying to balance your books. Trying is right. Judge, my salary just doesn't reach anymore. If you can't make ends meet, Gildy, why don't you look for some way to supplement your income? Find a profitable sideline. Sideline? That's easier said than done. You're a man of imagination, Gildy. Think of a way to make money and then do it. What man can imagine, man can do. Yeah. You may have undeveloped talents. Mm -hmm. At least if you have any talents, they're undeveloped. <laughs> All right, you old goat. Here's where I get off. Stop this cement mixer. Oh, yes. You wanted to get out at Floyd's, didn't you? Oh, watch it, Judge. What a driver. I think it over, Gildy. What man can imagine, yeah, man... Thanks for the ride, Hooker. <laughs> seem to be stuck in the snow. Yeah, Gildy, would you mind giving me a little push? Judge, don't you imagine you can get out of there by yourself? What? What man can imagine, man can do. <laughs> yeah. But Gildy! Oh, all right. I hate to see an old man cry. Sit right up there in the chair, Kamesh. I'll be with you as soon as I shave myself. Why don't you barbers shave at home? Wasn't expecting anybody this early. Here, read a magazine while you're waiting. Thanks. <sighs> then what's it going to be? Haircut and shampoo and massage? About time for the works, ain't it? Just be a haircut, Floyd. Those extras all cost money. Since when you started pinching pennies, Kamesh? You've always been known as a good spender in a barber shop. Well, I was balancing my books last night, Floyd. Oh, that... Uh, it's getting harder and harder to keep my head above water. It's getting rough, huh, Commish? Maybe you ought to get a sideline. Take like my wife's sister. She's got chickens in the garage. <laughs> Please, Floyd. I've just had a lot of bum advice from the judge. Those big ideas for making extra money always fizzle out. Yeah, look at this now. Learn to write. Make big money at home in your spare time. Isn't that ad ridiculous? It <laughs> would be for me. You, too, may become a successful writer after 13 easy lessons. Yeah? <laughs> and listen to this. Mrs. Emma Henshaw, housewife, pictured above, sold her first story for $600. What a lot of malarkey. I don't know, Floyd. Look, she's holding up the check. Looks bona fide. Says here, anybody with imagination can write. Uh-huh. Uh, come to think of it, that's pretty important to a writer. Imagination. How could writers think up those things if they didn't have imagination? It just happens to be one of my talents. It does? Oh, yeah. The judge was just saying what a good imagination I have. And what man can imagine, man can do. Well, maybe you could make the grade writing at that, Commish. You come up from nothing to be a water commissioner. <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> I was only kidding, Commish. I will say this for you. You write a good letter. Oh, you think so, Floyd? Yep. Remember that delinquent notice you sent to my and Lovey's house that time? Very well worded. Of course, it made us so mad we tore it up, but very well worded. <laughs> Thanks, Lloyd. Sure, and you got that literary air. I have? Sure. Why, you'd look just like that gent I seen autographing books down at Hogan Brothers if you let your hair grow and you... What am I saying? <laughs> Well, I'm ready to give you a trim, Commish. Uh, never mind the trim, Floyd. I may just let my hair grow. But, Commish... And if you don't mind, I'll take this magazine along. <laughs> By George, I might just mail this coupon. Thirteen easy lessons for $25. 
with constructive criticisms. $600 for a short story, eh? I wonder what they'd pay for a continued story. Ah, hello, PV. Ah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? PV, do you have one of those magazines for writers? How's that? You know, the ones that tell you how much they pay for stories. Let me see. I think we do have a magazine here on the stand that deals in such things. Yeah, here it is. Writer's Market, it says. Ah, uh, that's what I want. Let me see that. That'll be 25 cents. Yeah, well, I just want to look at it, Peavy. Very well, I can't charge for that. Anything else? Well, you might give me a couple of El Lobo cigars. Very well, El Lobo's it is. Hmm. I was going to give up cigars, but... Well, what's this? Best seller sold to movies. Betty McDonald's first novel, The Egg and I, sold for $50,000. Here are your El Lobos, Mr. Gildersleeve. That'll be 16 cents. 50... Take them back, Peavy. Bring me Corona Coronas. <laughs> Corona Coronas? My, my. Then I'll buy this magazine. Very well. Wrap it as a gift? No, Peavy. <laughs> I'm going to use it myself. You don't say. Nothing wrong with a man increasing his income at home, writing, if he has the talent for it. No. Not if he has the talent. I often wish I had a knack for writing. By Ned, I've had some experiences that would make pretty thrilling reading. Oh, that's so, Peavy? Mm, I'm here to tell you. Mr. Gildersleeve, if you should ever need material, it just might be you'd like to weave a story around the time Mrs. Peavy and I went to the Grand Canyon. Oh? What happened? Very thrilling sight, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> then there was a the time the tent show came to town and the romantic lead got sick and couldn't appear. I suppose you took his place. No, the ticket seller did. But I sold the tickets. Oh, for good. <laughs> Peavy, if I need any material, I'll take it from my own experience. Very well. I'm sure I've led a much more interesting life than you have. Have you ever seen the Grand Canyon? Well, no, but... Ever sold tickets in a tent show? Well, no, but... Well, then don't tell me who's had the experience. <laughs> Peavy, I may write a book about you with that. You are a character. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> This is the time of year when most of us feel a need for plenty of good, solid nourishment from our food. And one way to help get that nourishment is to eat plenty of parquet margarine with your meals. Sure is easy because parquet tastes so good. Well, it's easy in another way, too. With all its nutritional value, plus the 15,000 units of essential vitamin A you get in every pound, parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. Sure, it's easy to buy, but it's even easier to taste is all I'm saying. Well, there's a reason parquet tastes so good. It's prepared like a rare luxury food from the selected products of American farms. Reasoning ain't as important as tasting, Mr. Wall. You put some parquet on hot breakfast waffles and mm, mm, you forget all about reasoning. Same way with hot biscuits, buns, and bread. Any way you try it, parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. Friends, why not make sure you get the nourishment you need in this delightful way? This winter, buy light, delicately flavored parquet. The margarine that tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. They say necessity is the mother of invention. When the great Gildersleeve figured his income against his outgo for 1948, it seemed necessary to earn more money. A learn-to-write ad in a magazine caught his eye. And not one to shilly-shally, we find him up bright and early this Saturday morning, eagerly bent upon a literary career. No use waiting for those lessons to arrive. May as well start writing my first story now. Let's see. What'll I write about? wonder what Mrs. Emma Henshaw wrote about. <laughs> Say, maybe I should get a set of encyclopedias. I'll bet they're full of ideas. I'll telephone the bookstore. Well, no 
for use waiting for the encyclopedias to arrive. I can get an idea. I could write about Peavy selling tickets at the tent. No. I know what my trouble is. I don't have a typewriter. A good author thinks with his typewriter. Where's that phone? Well, no use waiting for that typewriter. I'll keep busy in longhand. Chapter One by Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Well, I better stop for a while. Don't want to write myself out the first day. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll go over and see Adeline. No, she wouldn't want to discuss books like I do. I think I'll go over and chat with Eve Goodwin. She's a school principal. <laughs> Hello, Eve. Why, Throckmorton, what a surprise. Won't you come in? Ah, thank you. It's been such a long time. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come into the parlor. Uh, parlor? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a little topsy-turvy, but Saturday seems to be the only time a school teacher has to clean house. Uh, looks fine, Eve. Very bohemian. What? Hmm? Uh, nothing. <laughs> you sure I'm not interrupting too much? Oh, of course not, Throckmorton. I'm delighted you came. Sit down. Uh, 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 thanks. Eve, guess what I've been doing? What you've been doing? You'll be surprised. Uh, is something exciting down at the water department? No, Eve. I'm doing a little writing these days. You're writing, Throckmorton? Yep. Oh, a an article about the water department? No, a story. Continued type. Well, this is a surprise. What are you writing about? Well, uh... Life and things. <laughs> Throckmorton, you haven't changed a bit. What? Oh, and I think this sudden interest in the finer things is commendable. But uh, what made you settle on writing? The money. I mean... <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, but think for a moment. How well are you qualified to become a writer? Qualified? Well, a lot of people without experience sell their first story, Eve. And I can write as well as them. They, Throckmorton. They? <laughs> I'll grant there are some isolated success stories, but on the whole, writing is very hard and disappointing work. Oh, I'm willing to work. I know you are. But a, a writer must read good books, uh, study and exchange ideas with well-informed people. Well, that's why I came over Ah, well, thank you, Throckmorton, but that's not quite what I had in mind. Uh, for instance, have you attended any meetings of our literary club on Saturday evenings? Oh, no, that's Jolly Boys Night. Mm-hmm. Well, it so happens there's an important writer in Summerfield now, a Mr. Clement. There is? Mm-hmm. He's going to lecture to our club this evening. By George Eve, that's wonderful. You'll attend the lecture? You bet. I'd like to meet this Clement fellow. Say, maybe I should invite him over to my house for tea. Yeah, I might learn a few angles. Well, I... If that's it, Eve, I'll give a tea. Crumpets and everything. You'll come, won't you, Eve? How Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon. Well, I'd be delighted, Throckmorton. Great, but I... I'll go invite him right now. Where is he staying? Uh, he's the house guest of our club president, Mrs. Pettibone. Um, Mrs. Pettibone, huh? That old Biddy and I never have been on the best of terms. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but what the heck? I'll invite her, too. She likes to bite into a free crumpet the same as anybody else. <laughs> uh, here she comes. I can see her through the little window. What a strut that Mrs. Pettibone has. And look at the tilt to her nose. Whoa! Hello, Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. Trouble with the water pipes in this neighborhood again? Oh, no, the water... No, indeed, Mrs. Pettibone. 
I came to invite your house guest, Mr. Clement, over to my house Sunday afternoon. Oh? You and Dr. Pettibone come, too, of course, for tea. Tea, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, crumpets, too, of course. We'll talk about literary things. In fact, it's going to be a literary tea. Oh, this is most extraordinary, Mr. Gildersleeve. I didn't know you had the slightest appreciation of the aesthetic. Well, I've kept it pretty well covered up. <laughs> but I'm doing some writing now. Oh, well, due to Mr. Clement's crowded schedule, I regret to say I don't see how we can possibly attend your tea. But, Mrs. Pettibone... I beg your pardon, Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, Mr. Clement. I, uh, I was in the study, and I couldn't help overhearing this gentleman's invitation to tea on Sunday afternoon. Uh, uh, well, you see, Mr. Clement... I uh, don't believe I've met Mr... Uh, uh, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. How do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? Writer, you say? Well, just getting started. I'm city water commissioner on the side. I see. Uh, Mrs. Pettibone, I believe with a little uh, juggling of commitments, I can attend Commissioner Gildersleeve's tea. You can? Oh, great. Sorry you and the doctor can't come, Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, oh we'd be delighted. Yeah, I was afraid of that. <laughs> I'm overjoyed that you wish to attend, Mr. Clement, because Mr. Gildersleeve is one of our favorite people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Splendid. Splendid. Uh, what is the hour, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, it's now ten minutes past... Oh, oh, you mean for Sunday. Well, shall we say four o'clock? Very fashionable hour. Then until Sunday at four. Good day, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, good day, Mr. Clement. Good day, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, uh, Mrs. Pettibone. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this afternoon, Anki? Well, a guest of honor and a lot of literary people. Mrs. Pettibone, Eve Goodwin. Oh, joy, a tea. I can hardly wait. Yeah, Leroy, uh -huh. you get going out of here. You keep out of sight till the tea's over. Teach me. Who wants to stick around? Leroy. Does the lace cap look all right, Miss Gilfleet? Ain't wore one of in a long time. Looks fine, Bertie. And the parlor looks wonderful. Thank you, sir. Them encyclopedia sure doll off the bookcase. <laughs> Uncle Moore. Uh, yes, Marjorie? Don't you think you're going a little overboard? All these encyclopedias and the typewriter. Well, I don't have to pay for them right away. And by the time I do, the royalties will be rolling in. I'll bet. You bet. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Will you meet Mr. Clement? You'll see what I mean. He became a successful writer, and now he just tours the world lecturing to women. Well, if that's what you want. <laughs> it wouldn't be bad. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. It's just a judge. Hello, Gildy. Well, come on in, Judge. The reason I invited you... I know. You want a dignity, culture, and brains at your tea party. <laughs> oh? Did you bring somebody with you, Horace? Touche. <laughs> Gildy, I wish to extend my compliments and best wishes upon your new endeavor. Well, thank you, Judge. Here, have a cigar. A Corona? Well... I thought you gave up cigars the other day to save money. <laughs> that was the other day, Judge. Oh, and Bertie, you get it this time. It's they. I'm coming. A cap on straight, Miss Gilfley. Yes, Bertie. Come on, Judge. Let's start talking about something. Grab an encyclopedia. <laughs> been a lovely tea, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, thank you, Mrs. Pettibone. Sorry you have to rush off. Goodbye, Jock Morton, and congratulations. It's been a very successful party. Oh, thank you, Eve. Gilda, let me shake your hand. This has been a most inspirational afternoon. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Judge. There'll be a lot more like it. Oh, Mr. Clement, are you coming with us? Uh, Mr. Clement has agreed to stay for a little private chat, Mrs. Pettibone. Oh. Uh, he may even give me a little professional advice. <laughs> hey, Mr. Gildersleeve has offered to drop me by later, Mrs. Pettibone. Yes. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Au revoir. <laughs> Bonsoir. <laughs> uh, these teas tire me. <laughs> well, Mr. Clement, shall we uh, go into my study? Very well, Mr. Gildersleeve. You know, I appreciate your coming over to my house for tea, Mr. Clement. I was very anxious to come. Oh, I'm honored. Care to sit down? Take the stuffed chair. Ah, 
Thank you. I'll take this one by the typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> nice cane you carry there. Is the head real gold? Well, I... <laughs> Yeah. Nice, expensive-looking suit you're wearing, too. English tweed? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Herring bone. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to tell that you've written quite a few books in your time, Mr. Clement. And quite a few. Yeah. Well, I'll lay my cards on the table, Mr. Clement. The reason I arranged this tea was to learn a few trade secrets from you. Uh, but, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, you seem to have a good thing here as water commissioner... Are you certain you want to get into writing? <laughs> I see through you, Mr. Clement. You don't want anybody to cut in on that big money, do you? Oh, it isn't that at all. In fact, I came over here to make you a proposition. Me? Wonderful. Yes, yes. You'll recall that I presented my lecture last evening without benefit of slides because they uh, <clears throat> failed to arrive. Oh, yes, yes. Well, what's your proposition? Would you mind lending me $20 so I can have my trunk sent on from Omaha? Lend you... So that's it. Get out. Get off the property, you writer. The real test of a good meal is its flavor, of course. And you add a light, delicate, delicious flavor to any meal you serve if you use parquet. A flavor the family will love, whether you use parquet margarine in baking and cooking or as a spread for hot rolls or bread. And incidentally, when you buy parquet, you spend only about half as much as you would for the most expensive spreads. Think of it. Half as much for this fine, nourishing margarine that tastes like a rare luxury food. Why not ask for parquet tomorrow? P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. This January, serve the spread that tastes like it should cost twice as much. So, PV, I sent back the encyclopedias and the typewriter and the... Thirteen easy lessons. There's no money in this writing game. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Huh? What's this, Peavy? You remember my little tent show experience you didn't think was worth writing about? Take a look at this. What? A check for $36. Don't tell me there's no money in this writing game. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> say, Peavy, how about coming over to my house some evening for tea and discussion? Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You bet. Say, are you a cheese lover from a way back? If so, you'll be glad to hear this good news. Now, at long last, Kraft has plenty of aged, natural American cheese for you. The mellow golden wheels dealers cut in wedges. Since before the war, the need for cheese has been so great that it was difficult to set aside much for curing. Just this past year, Kraft could send plenty of fine cheddars to the curing rooms, guarded for months and months. Now, this pre-war treat is back. Ask your dealer for a wedge of the mellow, grand-eating natural cheese aged so carefully for you by the master cheesemakers of Kraft. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.